Thousands of years ago, God met Abraham in a desert, promising him descendants as numerous as the stars. Today, millions of these promised children call themselves sons of Abraham, but they do not know their Father in heaven. Just as there are galaxies of stars whose light we've not yet discovered, there are entire people groups whose glory has yet to be uncovered. Come with us on a journey to know the unreached of Tunisia, a journey that reveals cultures and people groups that have survived millennia of political and religious upheaval. This journey takes us to the Tunisian island province of Djerba, where we find a flourishing population of the people known as Amazia. They are an ancient race that thrived in Tunisia long before Arabs from the east brought their culture and religion in the 7th century. Djerba is a tourist destination for Tunisians and internationals, hosting beautiful coastlines and a wealth of cultural sites. The island also hosts a diverse population of Amazia, Jews and Arabs from many countries. As a result, the mentality here is open and accepting of outside perspectives, making a way for peaceful coexistence and a reputation of hospitality. Pottery is the ancient profession passed down through generations of the Amazia in the village of Gulela. It is here that we meet Yuften. He's an Amazia business owner who sells and makes pottery in the traditional Amazia style. Yuften desires to see his people return to their ancient language and customs. The written Amazia language has been around for over 2,000 years. Its alphabet is full of symbolic meaning. The symbol of the free man is the most famous and recognizable. If you see this symbol painted, you know you are in Amazia friendly territory. But the freedom to speak and write their unique language has not always been available. In the 1950s, after the end of French colonization, Tunisia's first president, Habib Bourguiba, decided he must unify the country's people groups. Amazia villages were traditionally fortified in mountainous areas. Bourguiba incentivized the Amazia to abandon their cultural identity in exchange for one Tunisian Arab identity. Initially, he tried to build cities and communities down in the plains to force integration and draw the Amazia out of their mountain fortifications. When they refused to comply, their books were burned and their unique culture nearly eradicated. The Amazia remained hidden amongst the population in many villages throughout Tunisia. But the 2011 revolution which ousted the country's second president, Ben Ali, sparked a renewal of the Amazia culture and identity. They are a strong and proud people. Even the name Amazia means proud and noble man. لا مزيج لا لا والله معناها كانت قبل ما تنجمش تتكلم ما تنجمش تقول انا مزيغي تو رجعت معناها تنجم تتكلم تنجم تقول تنجم هاك الزينه هذيك المزيغ اللي كنا التيفينال هكي ما كناش نعملوها معناها نزينوها الفخار تو نعملوها ويطلبوا فيها جماعه يقول لك نحب قطعه فيها امازيغ The majority of the Amazigh in Jerba practice a rare sect of Islam called Ibadi as with many world religions, Islam is divided into a variety of worship styles based on teachings from the past that emphasize different practices. The Abadi Muslims believe that the real Muslim is the one who obeys the religion, not just in word, but also in deed. Winaruz is an imam in the local Ibadi mosque. In Jerba, because it's an island, 
our ancestors, when they came to, uh, to Jerba, uh, they were uh, escaping okay, from others. The Ibadis were in danger. In religion, many thinkers uh, had their special way of worship, mm -hmm. way of worshiping. They say different things. They say, for example, in, on the judgment day, we are going to see Allah, Kal Badr. Like this, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this. It's right, it's okay. The Ibadis know, they say it's impossible. How come you see Allah who created the world? You cannot. And they give their justification from the Quran, from the holy book, from Sunnah. Today, the Amazir are only taught their Muslim heritage and views of God. However, history shows us that they embraced the gospel of Jesus Christ for hundreds of years before the Arabs brought Islam by force in the 7th century. The Book of Acts records that there were North Africans present on the day of Pentecost. The church was established among them in the early centuries of Christianity. Some of the North African church fathers included Tertullian and Augustine, who were of Amaziah heritage. Early generations kept their Christian identity hidden. The symbolism of the cross and other references were used in their everyday life as a secret sign of belief and trust in Christ. It is still incorporated into architecture, artwork and even traditional tattoos. Today, however, most have no understanding or teaching about their Christian heritage. I was born here. I shouldn't be like this, just following. No. I must understand what we do. We, uh, we have the common things that Allah created us. Abraham is our uh, common uh, father. You accept, you should accept the others. Love is the key word. That night in the desert, God spoke to Abraham about things to come. The Amazir of Jerba were in the heart of the father as he spoke. They recognize Abraham as their father, but have never been taught why he was called righteous. Would you pray that they would open their minds and hearts to the revelation of Jesus as their creator, as the potter who molds them and takes great joy in their lives? Will you pray that they would desire to see God recognizing that God is love and that their own culture beckons them to remember? Many people are so close to believing the truth of the gospel. Will you ask the Lord how you might be a part of their journey? <laughs>